Okay, so I'm recording our session, and um, and really all what I wanted to do was answer any questions that you guys have. So you can either turn on your mic and say, you know, sir, can we go over number 11, or can we go over number 15, or whatever it happens to be, or if you feel more comfortable just, you know, putting it in the chat, we can definitely do that as well. So um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know so that we can excuse me, so that I can answer them, okay? Number 36, definitely. So let me scroll down. And guys, as I'm going through 36, if you are, if you've already started working on your review and you know you got stuck on something, go ahead and put in the chat or when I come back, uh, because I'm going to do 36 right here, then, um, you know, let me know, but you can put stuff in the chat as I'm working out here, okay? So let me see if I can get my pen going. Sometimes it freezes up. Here we go. Okay, so here's number 36, and it's asking us to multiply. And we have x plus 8 times x plus 4. So if x plus 8 and x plus 4, okay, so I'm going to multiply it like this and like that. Okay, so when we first multiply x times x, y'all, is going to give me an x squared. And x times 4 is going to give me a 4x. Then I'm going to do the same. So I've already used this x. I don't need to use it anymore, but I do need to use the 8. So now I'm going to say, well, 8 times x is an 8x. And 8 times 4 is going to give me a 32. And now we can combine these two together. So just a quick reminder, y'all, when I'm combining terms, the only thing I'm doing is combining the numbers in front. The variables don't change, okay? So if I have a 4x and an 8x and I'm adding those together, that's going to leave me with a 12x plus 32. And that's what I would write right over here, x squared plus 8x, I'm sorry, 12x. plus 32. So I hope that helps for number 36. Um, let's see. Any other questions or any questions anybody has about anything? And let's see. Yeah, I understand the process. Yeah, it definitely takes a little time to remember it. Um, so I, I understand completely. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Any questions, anybody? Don't be shy. Tell you what I'm going to do, and you tell me if this makes sense. So... Here we go. This is like one through, I know I'm kind of zooming out a lot, and I hope it's still okay for you guys to see. Oops. And I'll do it this way. If you're, if you're still kind of wondering, does anybody have any questions from like, say, one through six? And what we can do is we can kind of go through it, you know, kind of questions, you know, sort of like, I don't want to say page at a time, but like in groups of maybe you know, six at a time or whatever. If there's any questions you guys want me to do from these six, I'm more than happy to do them. If you guys feel like y'all are good, I'll just scroll on to the next kind of group of problems. So I'll give y'all a second. Let's see, you're good so far. Excellent. Okay. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the next group. So 7 through, yeah, let's go 7 through 12. Does anyone have any questions about any of the problems like 7 through 12 that you'd like me to go over? And if you do, I'm more than happy to do them. 11 and 12, excellent. Let's do 11 and 12. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in over here, y'all, at 11 and 12. Okay, and so guys, for problems like 11 and 12, 
This is when we're using the order of operations. And back in school, like when you were in probably like eighth grade or maybe ninth grade or whatever it is, you may have learned this PEMDAS. And so this stood for parentheses, exponents. So guys, when uh, in the videos, the one thing I, I really wanted to mention is that when we get to the multiplying division and the adding and subtracting, we have to go in order as they appear from left to right on both of these, okay? So if I look at number 11, the first thing I do notice is that we do have parentheses. And what we mean by parentheses is not necessarily this part right here, because inside those parentheses, it's just the number five. So what's really happening there is two times, two and five are being multiplied, but more like this part right here. Okay, so I'm going to go seven. Okay, in parentheses, four minus two is two squared minus two times five. Okay, so we've taken care of our parentheses. And so the next part we have is exponents. And yeah, we have exponents, so we're gonna go ahead and fix this part. So two squared is gonna be four minus two times five. So we've taken care of our exponents. We don't have any division, but we do have multiplication. So let's do this part. So seven times four, that's 28, minus two times five, that's 10. And then finally now we can go ahead and just subtract. So 28 minus 10 is gonna leave me with 18. So 18 will be my answer for this one. And so guys, again, I'm gonna just follow those, those order of operations, right? Parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, whichever one comes first, as I go from left to right, and the same thing with adding and subtracting. So for this next problem here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take care of our parentheses. So I'm gonna write here five times eight minus Let's see, four minus seven is a negative three, that's being squared, plus five times three. Okay, so we did our parentheses, we got taken care of that part. Now let's take care of our x one. So I'm gonna go five times eight minus. Now notice what we have, we have negative three in parentheses. So this means negative three times negative three, that's a positive nine, plus five times three. Okay. And now we do have multiplication, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So 5 times 8 is going to give me 40 minus 9 plus 5 times 3 is 15. Okay. And now, guys, I'm just going to go in order from left to right. So 40 minus 9 is a 31 plus 15. And 31 plus 15 should just leave me with 46. One of the things I really kind of want to mention, I'm glad, Serena, you asked me these questions about 11 and 12 dealing with order of operations. One thing I really want to emphasize, y'all, is if you notice, like, from here to here, we just did one thing. We just said, what was 4 minus 2? And we put that 2 right here, and then we just copied the rest of it as the way the problem was written. And then from here to here, we did one thing. We said, what was 2 squared? Oh, that was 4. And then from here to here, we did one thing. Well, kind of one thing. We multiplied those and multiplied those. My point though is I'm not trying to go from, I'm not trying to go from here to my answer in like the fewest steps that I can. The more steps that I skip, the, the more likely I am to actually get it wrong. So, um, so I really wanna be really careful and when I'm doing my problem and that I don't skip too many steps, and I don't, I don't try to do too many things, especially in my head, because if I'm doing something in my head, uh, I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not writing down the process or I'm not writing down what it is I'm doing. And sometimes we make mistakes that way. Okay. So excellent. I'm glad you asked these questions. I think they were excellent questions. So tell you what, I'll put up 13, 15, and 16. And we'll see if anybody has any questions out of these four questions here. Anything from 13, 14, 15, 16? Number 14, excellent. We'll do that one right now. Uh, let me see.
So number 14, okay, here we go. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so 14 says we're gonna evaluate. So guys, anytime we evaluate, evaluate means we're going to oops, plug and chug. And so, um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this expression where I have, and everywhere I have the letter R, I'm gonna plug in a negative three, and everywhere I have the letter S, I'm gonna plug in a four. So we're gonna go two, R is the number negative three squared plus four. S is the number four squared minus R times S negative three times four. Okay, so guys, this part, what we've done so far, we've done the plug, right? We've taken those numbers and we've substituted them in. Now we gotta do the chug part. Okay, so we're gonna go through order of operations. And we do have exponents here, so we're going to fix these exponents. So I'm going to leave that two alone. So, excuse me, negative three when I square it is going to give me a positive nine. Plus four times four squared is going to give me a 16. And then I'm just going to write this next part. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and multiply. So let's see, two times nine, that's going to leave me with an 18. Uh, 4 times 16, y'all, should leave me with a 64. And then I can sort of look at this as if I know that uh, a negative times another negative is a positive, so I know that I'm going to have uh, negative 3 times 4, negative 12, but this here is going to make it positive, so a positive 12. And then if you notice here, y'all, we're just adding, right? So I'm going to take my calculator real quick. I'm just using the calculator on my phone. Because I just need to add, let me see, 18 plus 64 plus 12, and I'm coming up with a 94, right? So again, when it's asking me to do that evaluate, just remember that evaluate really means plug and chug. And so what we're going to do is everywhere we have those numbers, we're going to plug those values in, right? Plug those values in. All right, good deal. So I'll tell you what, let me scroll down and I think we had stopped earlier at 16. So I'll put up 17 through 22 and then we can uh, see if anybody has any questions about any of these problems here from 17 through 22. Don't be shy, y'all. If y'all got a question, ask me. I'm, I'm always going to answer. I'm not going to tell you guys no. Guys, so I also know that, you know, our final is not until Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So some of you may have not had a chance to work on the review. The main reason I was doing it tonight is that next week I'm testing with all my classes. And... Um, and if you notice, guys, we have like, you know, one of our options, I forget what the days were, but one of our options is at 10 in the morning, and the other option was the other day at 6.30 in the evening. So I'm doing that for all four classes. So next week, um, you know, I'm testing every morning at 10, and I'm testing every evening at 6.30. That's the only reason I couldn't do our review session like the day before or whatever, because I'm testing every day, right? Um so I know our review session is today, but I know that not everybody has had a chance to go through the review. So after tonight, if you, if you know, as you're working on the review, if you have questions on the review, take a picture of your problem, send it to me on Pronto, send it to me on Remind. I'll make a video. I'll, I'll walk you all through the process. Okay, so know that you can keep asking me questions, you know, throughout the week. You know, the only thing is, guys, is... Um, like if you message me and I'm in the middle of take, if I'm in the middle of like proctoring a test, I may not get back to you until I'm done with that. Okay, but but please, you know, know that you guys can message me at any time. All right. All right. So guys, I'm going to scroll down a little further. So let's see. How about? Anybody have any questions here? This is 23 through 27.
Number 27, definitely. So let's go through 27 here, y'all. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see what's happening. Okay, and it says the Midwestern Music Competition awarded 35 ribbons. The number of blue ribbons awarded was, excuse me, three less than the number of white ribbons. Uh, the number of red ribbons was two more than the number of white ribbons. How many of each type of ribbon was awarded? Okay, so we have three types of ribbons here. We have blue ribbons, we have white ribbons, and we have red ribbons. And I want you to notice as I read this sentence right here, it's talking about the number of blue ribbons, but they're referring, they're talking about the number of blue ribbons in terms of the number of white ribbons. So I have no idea how many white ribbons we have. So we're going to say X is the number of white ribbons. Okay. And then if the blue was three less than that, then X minus three would be the number of blue ribbons. Okay. And then it tells me right here, the number of red ribbons was two more than the number of white. So if it's two more, it's going to be X plus two would be the number of oops, red ribbons. Okay. And we know we have a total of what, 35? So the way I'm going to write this out is the number of white ribbons, which is X, plus the number of blue ribbons, which is X minus three, plus the number of red ribbons, which is X plus two. This has to add up to 35. Now, remember, we're looking for three things here, y'all, and in my problem, I see the letter X three times, okay? So now, when we start to combine like terms, X, X, and X is going to give me a 3X, and then a minus 3 and a plus 2. So if I owe you $3 and I only have 2, y'all, I still owe you 1, okay? And now we can go ahead and start solving for X by adding 1 to both sides, Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to come up with x is equal to 12. Okay. So now that we've done that part, now that we got 12, what we want to figure out is what did, what did x stand for? And if you notice right here, we said x stood for the number of white ribbons. So the number of white ribbons we had was 12. So right here, y'all, I'm going to put the number 12. Okay. And the number of blue ribbons was X minus three. So I'm going to write 12 minus three. That's going to be nine. That's how many blue ribbons we have. And the number of red ribbons was X plus two. So 12 plus two, that's going to give me 14. And that's going to be how many red ribbons we have. Okay. But I hope that that made sense in terms of how I set it up. Guys, one thing I really want to emphasize here these are great questions y'all are asking, by the way, is before I get started, I always have to kind of write out this piece, this piece, and this piece. Because once I do that, then the rest of this part gets a little bit easier for me to do. Okay. All righty. So let me keep scrolling here. And I'll tell you what, we'll look at problems 29 through 34. If anybody has any questions from 29 through 34, yes, I can definitely do some of those, Tamara, and I will get there in a, in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to kind of go in order here, but I will definitely do some with, uh, with slopes and equations. So I'll tell you what, as I'm scrolling through these here, before I get to those, if uh, you're welcome, if there is a particular problem that you want me to do, and again, we'll see them in a second, but I'll definitely do some of those. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to do those. And I agree, those sometimes... The, the stuff with the slopes, guys, I don't want to lie. Some people do have, do have issues with those, so we'll definitely do some of those, okay? And we'll get there in a few minutes. Guys, anything from 29 through 34, I just want to make sure that we're good here. But, guys, we have, you know, we have a whole lot of time. I have another review session tonight, but it's not until 7.30. It's, uh, we're not even at 6 o'clock yet, right? So we got time. Okay, I'll go ahead and keep scrolling here. And so we already did 36. Did anybody have any problems from, say, 37 through 
I don't know, 42, we'll go like this. Anything from 37 to 42. And then guys, we'll definitely get the slope stuff. Uh, Tamara and Esmer, I'll definitely do those. And 41, yes, let's do 41. And so 41 here, guys, it says use the formula for binomial square to multiply. Okay, so guys, you don't have to use any kind of formula. Remember what this means. When you're scoring something, it just means that we're going to write it down two times, right? And now what we're going to do, we're going to go once and we're going to go twice. So 2x times 2x is going to leave me with a 4x squared. 2x times 9 will leave me with an 18x. Okay. Now remember, I've already used this 2x, so I don't have to use it anymore. And we're going to do the same thing here. So 9 times 2x is also 18x. And 9 times 9 is 81. And remember what I said, guys, when we're going to combine terms, the only thing we're doing is combining the numbers in front. We're not changing the x's. So 18 and 18 is 36 with an x. And then 81. And we got it. And guys, by the way, you would do this one exactly the same way. You would just write it out two times. Okay, you just write it out twice. Uh, let's see. You're welcome. So, guys, let's tell you, I'll tell you what. Let's keep moving along here. Anybody have any questions from 43 through 47? Forty-seven. Let's see if I heard something. Forty-four. Yes, definitely. Let's do forty-four. Excellent. Okay. So forty-four, y'all. The directions here are asking us to remove the greatest common factor. Okay. So the greatest common factor. We're going to do this in pieces. The first piece. We're going to look at the numbers twenty-eight, thirty-five, and twenty-one. Okay. And let me see if I can find that real quick because I know it's here. That's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Here we go. This is the one I was looking for. Okay, so the numbers we had were 28. Oh, I already forgot the numbers I had. 28, 35, and 21. I'm losing my spot. Here we go. 28, 35, and 21. So, guys. 28, 35, and 21, I want you to notice they are all right here, which means we can factor out the number seven, okay? Guys, I didn't put this in the, in the little email, but you can definitely use a multiplication table, uh, and I'll, I'll resend the email so that it'll have that multiplication table, kind of like the way we did for the midterm, and I'll give you the one that has uh, the 20 by 20 on there because I think this comes in really handy, okay? So let me do this, here we go. Okay, so we know that in terms of our numbers, we know we can factor out the number seven, okay? Now, the other thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the X's. So when it, in terms of how many X's can I take out, I can always take out the most is gonna be the one with the smallest power. So I'm gonna take out a seven X to the third. And now all we're going to do, y'all, we're going to divide. So 7 goes into 28 four times. Look how many x's we used to have. We used to have 6, and if we took away 3, we're still left with 3, right? And then there's a plus, so I'm going to put a plus. 7 goes into 35 five times. We used to have 5 x's, and we took away 3, so I'm left with 2 of them now. And then there's a minus, so I'm going to put a minus. 7 goes into 21 three times. We had three X's, and we took all three out, so we're not left with anything else there. And then if you – so, guys, this would be my process, and if I wanted to check my answer, I could just multiply once, twice, and three times a lady, right? I could multiply like that, and I, would, I should end up with my original problem right here. Good, good, good. Excellent question. So I'll tell you what. Let's do. Let's do this. So we're almost. We're look at guys. Uh, there's only 20, there's only 70 questions on the review.
here it's 45 through 49, so I'm sure we're going to get to those slope ones uh, pretty soon. So before we get there, anyone have any questions about 45 through 49? Y'all feeling okay about these? 47, let's do 47. Okay, so guys, for 47 here, it's asking us to factor x squared plus 16x plus 63. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys, and I, and I think I did this in the video, but I'm gonna show you guys the shortcut, okay? Anytime I'm factoring x squared plus 16x plus 63, this is going to work out when the number in front here is a 1, okay? If the number here is a 1, I can do the shortcut. So the shortcut is going to say set up two uh, sets of parentheses and put an x here and an x here. And the reason why I'm doing that is when I start to multiply x times x, well, that's going to give me that x squared, right? So that's the whole reasoning for putting that the x and the x right there. Now, the next part is going to say, we're going to look at the number 63. So I'm going to write 63. And I'm going to make a list of numbers that I know multiply to 63. So like 1 and 63. Uh, it's not even, so I can't divide it by 2, but 3 and 21. Uh, and I guess 9 and 7. Okay, I think those are the only numbers that I know multiply to 63. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at each of these pairs of numbers and we're going to ask ourselves, which ones add up to this number right here, the number in the middle? So the number in the middle is 16, and the numbers that are going to add up to 16 are going to be 9 and 7. So we're going to go with a plus 9 and a plus 7. And guys, what order you put them in, it's not important. So if you decided to write x plus 7 and x plus 9, that would that'd be fine as well. Okay, the order you put them in doesn't make any difference. Good, good, good. So I'll tell you what, let me zoom back out again. And I think I heard something in the chat. Let me double check. Ah, yes, 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 good, excellent. Guys, anything through, let's see. Let me do this. Anything from 48 to 52? Anything here out of these that y'all might have? Forty-eight through fifty-two. Okay, let me move on then. So let me scroll down here. Okay, so guys, here we are. We're getting to the idea of slopes and all that kind of stuff because it looks like problems like fifty-three through. Oh, and I'll, I'll stop in a little bit, guys. I'm going to come back and look at So it looks like 53 through 67. These are the ones that all deal with lines. So we have plenty of time, okay? So I don't want you all to feel that you can only ask me one question or two questions. You can ask me every question if you have it, okay? So I'll tell you what. Anybody, are there from here, 53, 54, 55, anybody want me to do any of these? So you got, okay, 53, let's do 53, okay. So 53 says here, okay, it says complete the ordered pair so that each uh, is a solution to the equation and then graph it, okay. So, so guys, what I'm going to, I'm going to do this in pieces. I'm going to think of that as A, B, and C, and hold on, I think I heard something in the chat, and then 55, definitely. Okay, so let's take a look here. So remember what I'm going to do, y'all. Uh, I'm going to take this equation I have right here, and I'm going to do this three times. But everywhere I have an x, I'm going to put a negative 1, and then I'm going to put a 0, and then I'm going to put a 1. So when I do this the first time, y equals 2x plus 4, the first time I do this, I'm going to plug in the number negative 1. Okay. So 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. And negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. So right here, y'all, I'm going to put a 2. Okay. 
And then when I'm going to do part B, part B is telling me that X is now 0. So I'm going to write out Y equals 2X plus 4. And I'm going to plug in a 0 where I have my X. So 2 times 0 is 0. And 0 plus 4 is just a 4. So I'm going to put a 4 right there. And then I'm going to do this a third time. And I'm going to plug in now x is equal to 1, because that's the third number we had. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Okay. So, <clears throat> guys, what I want to do here for this particular problem is, give me one second, this was number 53, I want to say. And let me double check. Fifty. This was fifty-five. Sorry, not fifty-three, but fifty-five. Oh, am I doing? Am I doing the wrong one? I think I. Let's see. Ah. Uh, fifty-three. Okay, I'm doing fifty-five. Okay, I see what you mean. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do fifty-three. Uh, I see what you mean. Oh, it's okay. Oh, good. Gesmer, I'm glad you're, I'm glad this is working for you, too. Okay, so guys, I'm going to come back and do 55 in a second. Yeah, I see that. Okay, so guys, what I'm going to do, uh, give me one fundamental por favor. Sorry, guys. I made a boo-boo. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share with you guys my, so I know this is 55. I had said 53. Okay, so I'm sharing with you guys the, the actual problem, right? And so the first time we plugged in negative one, we came up with a two, so we're going to check our answer. And then when we plugged in a zero, we came up with four, so I'm going to check my answer. And then when we plugged in a one, we came up with a six, and I'm going to check my answer. Okay, now it's going to ask me to do the graph. So guys, I wanted to do this like on, on actually my math lab so you could see exactly what it is I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to click on this little part right here. It says click to enlarge the graph. Okay, by default, guys, it always goes to this little arrow, but we're going to draw a line. So I need to click the second one. This is going to draw a line. Now, I want you to notice we have these points here. When, I plug, when I'm going to plot these points, it's only going to let me pick two of them. So I can either pick negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 6. I can't do all three. It's only going to let me do two. So I'm just going to pick the first one, negative 1, 2. Guys, I want you to look over here. I think you can see this, but I'm not certain. Right up here on this yellow part, if you look over here on the right, it tells you what point I'm at, okay? So I want to make sure I'm at negative 1 and 2. So I'm going to click that one right there. And then the next one was 0 and 4, that one right there. And I'm going to hit Save, and I'm going to go chickety check, and we got it. So just to let you know, this is how I'm going to do this. So let me stop sharing this, and we're going to come back, and we're going to do 53 because I accidentally did 55 first. Okay, so let's come back, and let's take a look at 53. Ah, yes. So 53 here says, let me make sure this is coming up. Yeah. Okay, 53 says, Alphonse and Melinda are taking a drive in a certain country. They know that a speed of 100 kilometers an hour is approximately equal to 62 miles an hour. So now they're driving on a road that has a speed of 80 kilometers an hour. How many miles per hour is the speed limit? Okay, so guys, this is going to be one of those ratio and proportion problems. When I have a ratio and proportion problem, y'all, I'm going to write one fraction equals another fraction. Okay, so the first part they're telling me is if I'm going 100 kilometers per hour, that's the same thing as going the same thing as 62 miles an hour, right? Now we're going to be going 80 kilometers an hour. How many miles an hour are we going to be going? Okay. So what I'm going to do, so guys, the one thing that's really important is kilometers per hour and kilometers per hour should be going like that. Miles per hour and miles per hour should be going. So now let's go ahead and cross multiply. So 100 times x is 100x. And 62 times 80, oh, I don't know, let me get my calculator. 62 times 80 is 4960. 
And then we're going to divide both sides by 100. And I'm coming up with 49.6. So right here, I want you to notice it says round to the nearest whole number. So 49.6, y'all, I would say that's going to be 50 miles an hour, right? And if I stop sharing this and I come back and I share my, my actual homework problem, right? And we said this was number 53. So let me scroll down number 53. Here we go. And so right here, y'all, I'm going to just type in the number 50. And I'm going to chickety check. And we got it right. Okay. So very good. I'm glad we got those two questions done. And so let's come back to our notes. There we go. Okay, so so far we've done 53 and we've done 55. Okay. And I know that like 58 is one where it's asking me to find the slope, but does anybody have any questions from 56, 57, or 58? Any three, 56, definitely. Let's do 56, y'all. Okay, <clears throat> so guys, 56, it's asking me to graph the equation x equals 1, okay? So what's different from this problem compared to like when we did 55, right? In 55, we had an equation that looked like this, y equals, oh, it was like 2x plus 2, something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, so 2x plus 4, I think, actually. 2x plus 4, right? But this equation both had y's and x's. This equation here only has the letter x. So anytime we have an equation where it has x equals some number, whatever number it is, y'all, this is going to be a vertical line. Okay, Vertical lines go like this. They go up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the x-axis where x equals 1. We're going to put a point. And then we're just going to draw a line that goes like this. So you might say, okay, well, I can see you drawing the picture, but how do I do it in my math lab? I'm going to show you right now. So let's come back here and let me show you on, oops, wrong one. Let me show you here how we're going to do this. This was number 56, I want to say. Yes, 56. Okay, and it says graph x equals 1, right? So I'm going to click this thing here. Remember, guys, by default, it always has the arrow. I need to go to the line. You said we're going to go to when x equals 1. So if you notice up there in that little, in this yellow box right here, look at the point that I have now. It says 1, 0, right? So here's my point. Now, I want my line to go straight up and down. So that means I can either go up or I can go down. But I want my line to look like this. Where do I put the other point? It doesn't make any difference, okay? If you want to put it up here, there you go. Hit save, chickety check, and we got it done. Okay, so excellent question. All righty, so let me come back to my notes. Here we go. Okay. I'll tell you what, we'll do it like this. Anybody have any questions from uh, 57 or 58? you want me to do? Are we good with these two? Okay, let me scroll down a little further. So 59, guys, is just like 58, but I'm, I'm happy to do it if you all have questions. Um, what about 59 through 63? Have any questions? 56. Okay, 56 and 60. Yes, yeah, so let me come back and we'll do 56. Did we do that one already? Yeah, we did that one. Okay, number 60 is what you said, right? Definitely. Okay, so let's take a look at number 60 here. So number 60 says we're going to use the slope intercept form to graph the equation. Okay, I'm glad you asked this question. I think this is a really great question. And I'm hoping that after we go through like something like 60, excuse me, that some of the other problems seem hopefully a little bit better. All right, so this is the slope-intercept form. 
of an equation, you know, okay? And, and remember what M is. M is my slope, and we call the slope the rise over the run, okay? And then the point zero and B is going to be our y-intercept, which is always going to be, y'all, my starting point, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I can find the M and the B from this equation here, okay? So when I look at this equation, I see that M has a negative, and then it's 7 over 3. And my winder step, it's always 0, always 0, and then whatever the number B is, B in this case is 4, okay? So guys, this here is going to be my starting point. So I'm going to find the point 0 and 4. So here's 0 and 4 right up here, okay? Now, when it comes to my slope, there's a negative hanging out in the front. Now that negative in the front, we can think about that negative either belonging to the top number, or we can think about it belonging to the bottom number. What we can't do, we can't say it's with both. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that's a negative seven over a positive three. So because we call it the rise over the run, sometimes we say it's a fall, okay? Since this top number here is a negative seven, I'm gonna move seven spaces down from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna move three spaces to the right. One, two, three. And that's what my line is gonna look like, okay? So look, let me show you how I'm gonna do that on my math lab so you can see that I'm doing it the same way. Here we go, let's pull this up. And we're doing number 60. Here we go, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna click right here. Remember, I'm gonna go to my line. And we said in this case, uh, zero and four was my starting point, right? So if you look up there, guys, you can see the little zero, four. And I'm gonna count. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, and I'm gonna to move to the right three. One, two, three, okay. I'm gonna go save, I'm gonna go check, and we got it, okay. So I hope that makes number, number 60 seem a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Tell you what, we'll do this. Anyone have any questions about um, 61, 62, or 63? Now, these are asking me to find an actual equation of a line. So if y'all got questions on these, I'm definitely happy to go through these, right? Anything, anything? Good so far? Okay, so let me keep scrolling. All right, what about 64 or 65? Anybody have any questions about these? 64 or 65? I want to write the equation looking at the line. We're good. Okay, let me keep scrolling. Uh, 66, the same type of problem. Uh, what about 67 or 68 or 69? Anyone have any questions about any of these here? And I'm happy to go over it. Oops. I'm happy to go over any of these. I heard something here. 68. Definitely. Let's go through 68. Okay, so. Number 68 says, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the third side of the right triangle. And then it says, leave any irrational answers in radical form. Okay, so guys, um, you may remember this from high school. Maybe you don't. Either In either case, it's fine. But this here is the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so the nice thing about this problem is that they've already told us this one here is c. 
Which one of these do you call A and B? It, it's not really important. Okay, so I'm going to call this one A, this one B, but we could switch them around and we'd still end up with the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to go 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. So remember, I'm just doing order of operations here. So 9 squared is 81. Uh, 12 squared is 144 equals C squared. And then I'm going to add those numbers together. So let's see, 81 and 144 is a 225 equals C squared. So guys, what I need to do now is I need to take the square root of 225. Okay, the way I find C is I'm taking the square root. So I kind of skipped a little step here. Sorry about that. I'm taking the square root on both sides. So the square and the square root cancel. Here's my C. Now I need to find the square root of 225. So on your calculator, guys, depending on what kind of calculator you have, you might hit the square root and then enter in 225. It equals, some people have to hit 225, then square root. But in either case, we should be coming up with 15. Okay. And there's my, there's my problem. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so what about the last two questions? Anybody have any questions from 69 or 70? Uh, why was it squared? So because of the formula, so because of the formula here, this is the, the formula right here with the squares, right? And so the way I get rid of it, so when I get to this part right here, the way I get rid of my square, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to solve for C and I know what C squared is. So the way I get rid of the square is we say, well, look, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the square root on both sides. Oops on both sides, and what ends up happening is this square and that square root cancel each other out. And then we take the square root of 225. So remember what the square root means. The square root means what number times itself gives me 225, and we come up with 15. And one thing I want to mention, guys, and um, and this is only going to work when you have what I call like pretty square roots. Let me see where I have it. I pass it. Ah, here we go. If you look here at our multiplication table, if you look at these numbers along the diagonal, these are our perfect squares. So what's the square root of 225? Oh, it's 15, right? Because 15 times this 15 gives me that 225. But, but that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get rid of the square root. And so when I, um, let me come back to my original problem. So guys, I'll tell you what, let's do, let's do both 69 and 70, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna do 70 first, okay? And the reason why I wanna do 70 first is when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, get my pen going. okay, when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, you always have to have the right triangle. Okay, what's important is that this side is C, the one that's across from this little 90 degree angle. Which one is A and which one is B is not really important, but what is important is C. So if you notice here in this problem, I don't know what this part is, that's gonna be my C. So we can call this one our A and our B. So we're gonna say, look, the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we're gonna say 14 squared plus seven squared equals C squared. So I'm just gonna take my calculator because I have to figure out what's 14 squared. So 14 times another 14. This is a 196. Seven squared, I know that's 49. Okay. And I'm gonna add those numbers together. So 196 and 49, that's giving me 245 equals C squared. So remember what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna take the square root on both sides. So, when we take the square, the square and the square root cancel of 245. So guys, on your calculator, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it on my calculator. And let me see. Let's see if I can do something real quick here. Okay, perfect. So let me stop sharing this. And I'm going to show you guys on... Here we go. So I just went into Windows and I just typed in, you know, my calculator. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 245. And then this button right here is my square root button. So look at the answer I'm coming up with. I'm coming up with like a 15.65, right? So let me stop sharing this real quick. And I'm going to come back to my notes, which is right here. We came up with a 15.65. So I'm going to write that in here. C equals 15.65. Oops. And if I'm looking, okay, which is going to be the one? It says round to the nearest 10th. So 15.7 would be my answer, right? Okay, now when I come back and I do 69, when I look at 69, y'all, okay, remember what we said in terms of my triangle? Here is my right angle. The side across from that is going to be C. So in this case, we know this is C. So suppose we decide to call this one A, but we don't know right now, we don't know what B is, okay? So look, I'm going to write down my formula. I'm going to put A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared is 5 squared. I have no idea what B is. We'll figure that out in a minute. C is 14, so I'm going to put a 14 squared. I know that 5 squared is 25 plus B squared. I'm going to take my calculator so I can figure out what's 14 times another 14. This is a 196. Okay. Now, since I'm trying to get this guy by itself, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 25 on both sides. So 196 minus 25, let's give me a 171. So I'm coming up with B squared equals 171. Remember what we need to do now? We've got to take the square root, right? So this square and that square root will cancel. 171, right? And I want you to notice here, it says, Type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So I'm just going to leave this as a 171 right there. And I'm going to show you all something real quick. So let me stop sharing this. And I'm going to show you guys right here. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down until I get to number 69. Okay, so right here, y'all, I'm going to type in right here. I want you to notice down here at the bottom, there's a little square root button. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to type in 171, and I'm going to go check my answer. Oh, no. Why didn't that work out? Oh, let me see. Did I, do, did I make a boo-boo? Maybe. Let me see. Let me come back to my notes. Uh, let's see. What do I have? 196. 96 minus 25, 171. Why did it not work out? Unless I can break that down. Let me see if I can break this down a little bit. Oh, let me see. Here. 171 square root. Okay. So 171 divided by 9 is yes. Okay. All right. So I didn't see this part here. So I'll fix it for us. Okay. So guys, in, in section 9.2, one of the things that I showed you guys was how to break down these numbers, okay? So what I'm going to do here, I have the square root of 171. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to see if I can break, if I can break this number down. So uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to stop sharing this. And I'm going to, oops, one. and I'm going to share my calculator one more time. Go. Okay, so let me clear this out. So I had 171, right? And if I hit the square root button, do you see how it comes up with like, the kind of like the one we did a little while ago, right? It's not a nice, pretty number. What I mean by it's not a nice, pretty number is like if I asked you, what's the square root of 81? You hit 81. And the square button, you should come up with 9, right? Something like that. That's what I mean by a pretty number, okay? So let me stop sharing this, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to figure out how do we simplify when we have something like this. So <clears throat> when I have the number 171, I'm going to try to break it down. Now, I know that it's not even, so I can't divide it by 2. So I'm going to try dividing it by 3. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to say, what's 171 divided by 3? Oh, it's 57. Okay. 
And I'm going to try to divide that one by 3 again. So let me divide this one by 3. Oh, and this is 19. Now, 19 is a prime number, so I know I can't break down 19 anymore. Now, what the square root means, though, the square root means we're grouping in pairs. So what number do I have a pair of? Well, I have a pair of threes. So whatever I have a pair of, that number is going to come outside. Whatever I don't have a pair of, that number will stay inside. So my answer should be three square roots of 19 because I can simplify this by at least breaking that number down, okay? So square root means we're grouping grouping in terms of pairs. And if I have a pair of a number, if that number comes outside the square root, the number that I don't have a pair of has to stay inside. So let me come back one more time. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And let me share my thing one more time here we go and okay so i'm going to clean this up right here so let me get rid of all this business and i'm going to type in three and then i'm going to hit my square root button and i'm going to go 19 and i'm going to go check my answer and we got it done okay so and then i think for the next one we came up with 15.7 so we'll check our answer we got that one done so um, let's see, uh, let me get out of here and come back to my notes. So um, after going through some of these problems here, do you guys feel, uh, y'all feel a little bit better about some of the problems that we've gone through, especially those that y'all had about like slopes and lines and stuff like that? Do you guys feel any better about those? Okay, uh, as where I understand completely, yeah. So, so um, one thing I really want to emphasize, y'all, is between now and let me see. Let me stop sharing this one more time. I'm going to share one more thing. Here we go. Okay, so I'm looking again at our at our uh, our sessions. So guys, we have a, so one of the sessions is next Wednesday, a week from the night at 6.30. The other one is next Thursday at 10 a.m., right? So anytime between now and next Wednesday or next Thursday, whenever you decide to sign up for the test, so guys, remember here is the sign-up sheet. Um, anytime between now and, and next week, whenever you take your test, if you come across any questions, that you guys have that you're not certain about and that you want me to go over, um, then just let me know, okay? Let me know which questions you guys have and I'll be happy to make a little video and I'll you know, I'll walk you all through it like, I, like I've been doing. But I wanna make sure that you guys feel okay, okay? So I know that you know we, had, we did the review session a week in advance and I'm guessing that not everybody has had a chance to go through the, those uh, questions. But you know, know that you can, Send me a message on Pronto. Send me a message on mine. Hey, sir, can you can you help me with number, you know, I don't know, 54? Can you help me with number 61? Whatever it happens to be, okay? And uh, and I'll make a video and I'll send it to you. And if you guys need to do a little one-on-one -on -one session, we'll we'll figure out a time when we can do that, okay? So, um, do y'all have any other questions about anything that you want me to go over? Just want to make sure you guys feel okay about all this good stuff. Um, so guys, as I have you all here, I want to see, hmm. yeah, I don't have it here. I'm going to make a quick video. I'll probably do it sometime tonight and I'll send it out. I meant to do it last week and I just forgot. I don't know how many of you all have signed up for, for classes for either the summer or for the fall. Uh, so, guys, I know in the fall we do have some face-to-face -face classes uh, that the college is setting up. Uh, they set some up this semester, but there was, I don't think there was a, like a ton of people signing up for them. But uh, the way they were doing them, at least this semester, and my understanding, this is how they're going to do them also in the fall, is they're going to be in classrooms that are really, really big. So, like, if, you, if any of y'all have been to the Pecan campus, there are some rooms in Building J um, 
that basically they have two doorways, like one doorway is on this side of the classroom, one door is on this side of the classroom. So it's like a room that they basically knock the wall out of the middle of, okay? And it's a massive room. And they have these tables, and there's like 50 tables. And what they're doing is they're saying, instead of two people to a table, it's one person to a table. Okay, so they're they're keeping you guys so that, you, you know, nobody's right next to you, that kind of thing. So in a room that would normally hold 50, now it's going to hold 25. Or the room had, you know, 48 tables, now it's going to hold 24. Whatever it happens to be, right? Um, so they're doing stuff like that to kind of, you know, hopefully make it safer for people to go back who feel like that's what they want to do. Um, but you guys have some options in, re in regards to the next course that you're going to take. And so uh, depending on what your major is, y'all, there's going to be certain classes that y'all are going to take. Um, and so uh, I'm actually, I'm actually going to share something with you guys real quickly. So um, what I wanted to know if anybody's willing to be a volunteer and tell us what your major is. So if anybody wants to say, what's your major? My major is blank. I'm going to show you guys how you can fix information systems. Okay, so perfect. So guys, what I'm doing here, I'm on the STC homepage, right? I just come down here. And Serena says uh, information systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click I'm trying to see, and I have heard somebody else say it, business administration. We're going to do both. And Tamara, if you want to tell us yours, because it's just three of us, we can, we can definitely do it. So information systems, I want to say that's probably going to be math and science and IT. Information technology right here, clicking on this. And let me see. What I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down until... I'm trying to see if I can find the degree. Okay, so there's a certificate, but there are there are also here we go. Information technology specialization, uh, technology specialization information systems. So I'm going to click on this one. Here we go. I'm going to look to see what math class Serena needs to take. All right, so Serena, you have two options. You can take math 1332, or you can take math college algebra. Okay. So I'm going to explain the difference between these two. In Math 1414, this is a college algebra class. This class here is more algebra intensive. So like the stuff that we did with factoring, the stuff that we did with lines, the stuff that we did with polynomials, you're going to see a lot of that in college algebra. Okay. And I'm not saying it's not useful. It could be very useful to you. And I don't know enough about information systems to tell you, you know, uh, and one thing, Serena, you would have to ask yourself is once you finish your program, your two-year degree with STC, do you think you're going to want to continue and earn the bachelor's degree and you may decide to do that? So I heard something in the chat box, so I'm going to double check. Oh, my goodness, where did we go? Here we go. Um, okay, Tamara, I see yours. So you would take one of those two classes. So I'm going to basically, which if you were taking a uh, college algebra, you're going to do a lot of algebra type stuff, right? If you're taking contemporary math, contemporary math, this one right here, the 1332, guys, this is a math class for people who don't need a lot of math in their degree. So, and it's, uh, I used to teach at Austin, in Austin, uh, I worked for Austin, excuse me, for Austin Community College for like 13 years. And over there, when we were teaching that class, at one point it was called Topics in Math because you would just do different topics. So we did like some financial math. Like what I mean by financial math is um, if you want to buy a house, which is something everybody I'm guessing at some point is going to want to do, uh, how would I figure out how much my mortgage payment is based on my interest rate and based on my down payment and how much the house costs? We can do, we do stuff like that, right? We do a little bit of probability. So like if you're playing cards, right? If you're playing cards, like you're playing, uh, you know, blackjack or you're playing uh, poker, 
like that. You do probability type problems, okay? In college algebra, you do a lot of algebraically intense stuff. So that's going to be the class you're going to end up taking. Now, guys, for, for both of these classes, in order for you to take contemporary math or college algebra, you need to pass the TSI, okay? Now, there is a, there is a, there is a, a big way around that. If you decide, you know what, I don't want to, because I know somebody messaged me, and I don't remember who it was, but if somebody in our class asked me about the TSI test, um, I don't remember off the top of my head who it was. You don't have to take the test, guys. You don't have to worry about taking that test if you don't want to. What we have is we have classes that are called co-requisite classes. And I'm going to show you that in a second, too, to, to show you. And what you basically do is you sign up for two classes, and one of the parts, you kind of do a little remediation to get you ready for the college level part, okay? And I'll show you that part in a second. So let me come back to the home page, and I'm going to look at, let's see, the second person that asked, Tamara, you were the one that asked me about it, yes. So let me do business administration, and then Tamara, I'll get to enter disciplinary studies. So business administration. So guys, I'm scrolling down here, business and technology, right? And I'm going to go business. So just to let you know, they do have two plans. One of them is a transfer plan, Esmer, and one of them is the plan here. Um, this class, it does, okay, transfer. So, uh, Serena, I'll get to your question in a second. So, we're going to click here, and let's see, and I'm going to keep scrolling, transfer plan, here we go, and I'm looking for, okay, so right here, it tells you that they recommend that you take Math 1324. So, this class, similar to college algebra, it's not, you don't have as much algebra, but this class, when I have taught it before, it used to be called business algebra. So it's problems dealing with business. Uh, you do things like amortization, stuff like that. So amortization basically means you're making like a, almost like a mortgage thing. Uh, how, would, how would it look like if you had a, like a spreadsheet that shows that you've made payments, how much of that went to the principal of the loan, how much of that went to the interest of the loan, okay? So that's gonna be, that would be the course that you would take. And, and then Tamara, let me get to uh, to yours, which was interdisciplinary studies in education. Okay, so let's see. Um, it might be here. Well, okay, well, here's education. Okay, so are you looking at um, early childhood through sixth grade, middle school fourth through eighth grade, or something more? Let's see, I heard it. Eight, okay, perfect. I got you. Thing right here, so we're going to click right here. Okay, so again, they recommend college algebra. Okay, they recommend college algebra, so that would be the one that you'd end up taking. Okay, so guys, now the next thing I'm going to show you is. Uh, and Tamara, I will get to your question also about the TSI stuff. Okay, so guys, when you come down here and we said, okay, what kind of courses do we want? Okay, so right here, I'm going to type in math. Okay. And okay, so right now we are taking, uh, and let's see, this is for the fall. So if you want to do it, I'll tell you what, I'll keep it for the fall, but if you want to do the summer, we can, I can show you how to do that too. Okay, so... Um, let me see. Uh, so, Ezra, you were at, yours was 1324. So, what we're going to do here, if you look at this one right here, this one says math 1324. But you, if you notice this part right here, it says co-requisite. That's the one that we're looking for. Okay. So, just to give you a heads up, if you wanted to take it, if you wanted to do a face-to-face -face class, they do have one uh, right and early in the morning at... Uh, at Pecan Campus at 8 in the morning, um, but they do have that set up, okay? But you're looking for the one that says co-requisite. And then for the college algebra, it's Math 1414, so I'm going to keep kind of scrolling until I get to Math 1414. Here we go. And the ones that we're looking for, y'all, are the ones that say co-requisite. So these here are online, right? And these here are face-to-face. Now, what this means, and I'm going to show you for both. So if you notice here, the class says math 1414P06, right? Um, I'm going to come back to my home page, 
I'm going to come back. I'm going to do my search again. And right here, it, it'll tell you when you register, okay? But instead of me type, typing in math, I'm going to type in M-A-T-L, okay? And then for like the 1414, if you notice, there is a 0014 class 2, okay? So you would, you would basically sign up for two classes. So like that college algebra class, y'all, was um, the college algebra class Come on. Here we go. Let me pull this up. One more time. And let's see. It's here. The next one. Here. Let's see what you guys are looking at. Okay. So if you notice, if you notice right here, let me see if I can find it. Okay. Here's the one at Pecan. Notice this class meets on Monday and Wednesday from 10 to 10:50, right? And this is the college algebra support course. So when I look at the one for college algebra, oh, one more time. Uh, oh, let me see. Here we go. If you look at the one from college algebra, that class was meeting from eight to nine forty-five. And the lab part meets right after. And it's in the same room, so you don't have to go anywhere, right? But you're basically signing up for two classes, okay? Um, and so you actually end up getting two different grades and all that kind of stuff. But, and, and guys, when you sign up for, like, the college on for co-rec, right? When you sign up for this class here or where's one of the problem? Here we go. This class right here, um, it tells you, hey, there's a lab component. you got to sign up for both, Okay. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. You're looking at the ones that say co-requisite, okay? Those are the ones you're looking for, whether it's Math 1414, whether it's 1324. And then to answer your question, Serena, about um, doesn't this do the TSI thing? So once you complete this class, and, uh, and Tamara was the one who I think she said she was the one who asked me about the, the TSI test. Um, so you can go take the TSI test. My recommendation would be take it whenever you're done with your final week, right? So next week is our final Wednesday, Thursday. Schedule for the week after. Go take the test. If you pass the test, then you don't have to do the code requisite course. You can sign up for just Math 1414 College Alpha or just Math 1324, Math for Business and Economics, okay? You don't have to do the, the code requisite one. The only time you have to do the co-requisite one is if you do not pass the TSI test, okay? Um, my two cents, you guys, take the co-requisite class. The only reason I say that is, there is, like, when you take college algebra on its own, there's an expectation that you know certain things that I have, that we don't cover in Math 100, okay? We, before, we used to have another class called Math 200, and we covered it there. So the way the state looks at this is they say, well, if you pass the TSI test, then we're going to assume that you know certain things, and you may know them and you may not. My recommendation is take the co-workers apart. There's enough remediation there. There's, we go over enough material to make sure that when you, once you cover that part, then you're ready to go do, like, the college level. And it's all in the same class. Um, so, I mean, you, again, Serena, you can. You can go take the TSI. You still have to take the TSI test. By taking this class, you don't become TSI complete, okay? But it, this class does get you ready for the test. Some people pass it. Some people don't, right? Um, but my recommendation is take the co-requisite part simply for the reason that I've had students before who sign up for my regular college algebra class. And they, they sign up for that class because they went and they took the test. And what happened was the day of the test, they happened to guess a whole lot, and they just guessed right. But then they get them like, sir, I have no idea what you're doing, right? If you take the co-requisite class, all those things that, the, that those other students said, sir, I have no idea what you're doing, you're going to have an idea of what we're doing because we're going to cover that at the very, very beginning, okay? So anyway, I, I just I really wanted to mention that to you all, but, but that's basically how you figure out what class you need to take, right? Go to the... the uh, the STC homepage, look at your degree plan, and look at what course they're recommending that you take, all right? 
Uh, that's how you can get an idea of what class you need to take. And guys, I would always double check with an advisor, right? So tell, talk to an advisor, say, I want to, this is a class that I think I need to take because I checked on the degree plan. Can you, can you just double check that we're, this is the right one, okay? Double check with an advisor, uh, but that's basically the easiest way to do it, okay? So anyway, um, guys, that's it for us today. Like I said, if y'all have any questions, I'm going to stop recording. If y'all have any 